Somera mudiro lyo nge wagidua Maryland High School elisangi wentebe Somero lya bawala na balenzi Dusomesa arts and sciences okubire dela kusini yesoka okutukira dela kusini yomukaga ngali sangi bwa muchifechi wewe po bulunje tulile bisule byo mulembe Science Laboratory Sakoni Computer Lab Wamune She gives you her number But your pen didn't work and the bus is gone Yes, uh, a good morning to you, my dear students. I want to welcome you uh, this morning to this lesson. But I also want to welcome you to the month of August. Today is the 1st of August. Um, I was calculating through and noted that we have spent uh, four months and um, close to half of the month on our lockdown. I want to thank God that we are still safe and to ask the President and the Ministry of Health to continue uh, ensuring they direct us and guide us on uh, the fight towards uh, this COVID-19. Um, back to the lesson, I want to continue to encourage students to keep checking on my YouTube channel for more information and continue reading. Uh, we were looking at refraction, we are still looking at refraction of light and I left a few numbers. I will work through two of them and uh, notify or share with you the answers on the last number before we start uh, the content that is meant for today. I have put the numbers over here and uh, one of the numbers one of the numbers gave us a diagram where we had an angle of incidence um, as 30 degrees and that was in water. It was refracted in glass and emerged in air. <coughs> we were given the different refractive indices for water, for glass and for air and we are required to find the value of R as part one and the value of I at the emerging point. Uh, we shall use our condition for, <coughs> for parallel uh, media that N, the sign of I, is a constant. If I call this point A, uh, we shall use it at A to find the value of R. So the refractive index of water times the sign of the angle of incidence in water should be equal to the refractive index in glass times the sign of the angle of incidence. Now this angle is considered to be the angle of incidence because it is alternate to this incident angle at this point, which I will call B later. So this is R but it is an angle of incidence since it is alternate to the angle of refraction here. So if we substitute in, we are looking for R, our sign of R will definitely be equal to the N water over N glass times the sign of I. And when we feed in the values, we have 4 over 3 divided by 3 over 2, which will be times 2 over 3 times the sign of 30 degrees. The sign of R, therefore, if you compute, should be able to give you uh, 8 over 9 times a half, which is 4 over 9. And the R, if you use your calculators, um, you should be able to get uh, R as... Uh, use your calculators if you are following this lesson uh, to get the value of R which should give you which should give you 
a value of 70, a value of 26.39. The value of R would be 26.39. I hope those who computed through have been able to get that value. We usually encourage two decimal places at minimum because we are dealing with angles. To the candidates and any other students following, I want to emphasize that if you were to use this value in decimal points, uh, let me verify what it is. 4 divided by 9 will give you 0 0.4 recurring. If you are to use this value in decimal points, you are advised at least to cut it off maybe at the 4th or 5th decimal place. If you just write 0 0.4 because it is recurring, it is going to give you an angle that is not going to be considered accurate, much as it will be close to the accurate answer. So to avoid that, let us always stick to the value obtained here. Uh, they wanted us to find the value of i as well. To find i here, we can use uh, glass air, but we can also use reversibility of light. I will be using reversibility of light to avoid uh, conversions that uh, may not uh, be clear to some of you. Uh, if we want I, we already know R. So our R has been got as 26.39. We shall definitely use that R over here because we are looking at refraction at point B. At point B, at point B, uh, considering reversibility of light, if you consider reversibility of light, uh, we shall have our um, ANG. Because light is now going from air back to glass. Will be given by the sign of I, which we want, over the sign of R, which we have. And this is going to be sign I over the sign of 23.69 degrees, implying that our I, which we are looking for, is going to be the arc sine of our ANG, which is 3 over 2 times the sine of 23.69. Because of space that um, I estimated earlier, when you compute this, when you compute this, you would be able to get you will be able to get this angle when you compute this you will be able to get this angle as 1.5 times the sine of this. Ensure that your calculator is in degrees, first of all. And if your calculator is in degrees and you compute this expression, you'll get the value of the angle as 26.39. as 41.81 degrees. The value of the angle of emergency I will be obtained as 41.81 degrees. It is important when you are doing numbers involving use of trig functions to always ensure that your calculator is in the degrees mode. Otherwise, if it is in any other mode, you will still get values on your calculator, but they will not be considered correct. Now, for the second number, we had, we had a question 
where we were given, I have simply summarized it into sketches, but we were given media and we were given speed or velocity of sound in those different media. And uh, we were told that the angle of refraction is needed, um, but we were given the angle of incidence, um, the angle of incidence to be 12 degrees. So if we consider sound moving from soft tissue to bone, we want to find the value of R. And basically, since we have speed this time round, we shall use the, that refractive index is speed in a vacuum over speed in a media. We looked at this expression which we derived at the start of this discussion. And since we have been given the different speeds, we will still consider the interpretation uh, that we earlier used. That if I look for the speed um, in uh, the soft tissue, and that speed is 1.54, I divide it by the speed where we have the refracted ray, which is 4.08. I don't need to convert the units because the units cancel out. That ratio should be equal to, again, the ratio of the sine of I over the sine of R. And therefore, it will be equal to the sine of 12 degrees over the sine of R. And if we compute the sine of R will definitely be equivalent to 4.08 out of uh, 1.54 times the sine of 12. And when we compute, uh, this will definitely be able to give us R1. I called it R1 um, as the arc sine of a figure that we can get as 0 0.550839. Um, when you look for the arc sine of that figure, you'll get an angle that will approximately be 33.42 33.42 degrees. So the angle of refraction in the bone in the bone will be 33.42. The same approach will be used to find our R2. So since what we have, my dear learners, is the speed. The speed we again use, that speed in air, um, which will be 0 point this time 3, I think it was 3, 3. Yes. Over the speed in the medium, which is the soft tissue, should be equal to the sine of 12 once again, over the sine, uh, this can be called R2. And R2 will be equal to the arc sine, or the sine inverse, of 1.54 over 0 0.330 times the sine of 12 degrees. And when we compute, once again, using your calculators, you will be able to get R2 as approximately 75.99 degrees. As approximately 75.99 degrees. Remember, this was left as an exercise. I expect you to have worked through it, and you are basically verifying that your answers are correct. Your answers are correct. At the end of today's lesson, I'll be leaving you with uh, several questions to further sharpen you on the area of refraction, especially on calculations. I want to give a few minutes 
for you to capture this. I uh, will be sharing the answers for number three, which we are not going to work through. And then we can move right away to our, our discussion topic or area for today. For number three, for number three, allow me to mention that you were required to find a speed in a, a medium which was the liquid. The speed for number three, the answer I expect you to get um, was that if you took the sign of 15 over the sign of 60, you would get the refractive index from liquid to air. And uh, upon calculation, you were expected to get the speed as 1104.2 meters per second because the units that we are given for the velocity or the speed of light uh, in um, in a media in air was 330 and for number three if you you worked it out you would have got you should have got 1004.2 meters per second 1004.2 meters per second those are the numbers that I left last Saturday. Those are the numbers that I left last Saturday. Our value of the angle of refraction, 26.39. The emergent angle, which we called I, 41.81. Um, the value of the angle of refraction, uh, in number two, 33.42 degrees. The degree must be there. And then the second value is 75.99. I want to emphasize that in practical physics, when we are dealing with numbers again to do with angles and evolving sign, when we put a column for degrees, the symbol for the degree is usually compared with the way you write your zero. If that symbol, for example, this one here, is considered and it is declared to be bigger than the zero in any of your columns, then it is not a correct unit for the degrees. I will request my producer to now... Um, give us the first page of what we need to discuss in today's lesson. You can give us the first page where there is the real and apparent depth. Where there is real and apparent depth. There are a few terms there that I am sure the candidates and any other students attending this lesson are now looking at. Um, real and apparent depth. This is a concept that is commonly observed when you look at usually the bottom of a swimming pool with clear water. The bottom usually appears to be nearer than is actually the case. And uh, that situation, that situation uh, is because of refraction. If at all you were asked to define these two terms, real depth and apparent depth, um, we would define real depth as 
the actual the actual distance the actual distance from the surface from the surface of a liquid to the bottom the bottom where the object is placed Uh, in simple English, we say it is the actual distance from the surface of a liquid to the bottom where the object is placed. In other words, if an object is placed at the bottom of a glass uh, that is filled with water, from the surface of that water to exactly where the object is, is the real depth. In reality, the real depth. Then when we talk about apparent depth, When we talk about apparent depth, apparent comes from the word appear. That means it is not reality. It just appears. So we say that this is and we avoid using the word depth. We can use length, we can use distance. This is the distance Uh, measured from the surface of a liquid to the point to the point where the image where the image of the object of the object appears to be for cases of refraction like I have said at the start when we look at the appearance of the surface of a swimming pool it usually appears to be nearer it appears to be nearer than is the actual case and the reason is because of refraction, I will go ahead to illustrate. I will go ahead to illustrate this with a diagram that we shall use to further derive the expression for refractive index. But before I illustrate this, I will look at part B, uh, part B, and summarize it. That whereas we have and we are aware that refractive index is the ratio of the sign of the angle of incidence to the sign of the angle of refraction for light moving from one medium to another, we today will be able to add on that refractive index can also be obtained as the ratio of real depth to apparent depth. The ratio of real depth to apparent depth. Of course, this should be put in words. I have summarized it there. Um, I will use an illustration. I will use an illustration that should be able to help us live the said expression in part C. I will use an illustration that should be able to help us. If I consider this as a container and I put an object, this is an object, it can be a coin. It can be a coin. It is put at the bottom. If an observer is looking at this object vertically up, uh, with the eye in this position, with the eye in this position, they will be able to see the image. If I take this as the surface, they will be able to see the image of this object somewhere here. 
O is the object. We are going to consider I as an image. Now, this, if this is water in a container, I want to further confirm to the students taking this lesson that this is what we have referred to as the real depth. And if I may come this side, this is what we have referred to as the apparent the apparent depth. So if this is the image of this object, we can complete a diagram we shall use and say that if an object, if a ray is incident from the object to the surface, this line will act as a normal and therefore this will be the angle of incidence. At this point, we can impose another normal line. And light will definitely be refracted off to another observer at this position. But this light is seen as if it is coming from this image, from this image I. In other words, it gives this observer an impression that the image of this object is nearer the, the, to the surface than is actually the case. And this angle is the angle of refraction in this case. And if you compare uh, the geometry of angles, this angle R will be equal to that angle as well. And this angle I, this angle I is alternate to this angle because these normal lines are parallel. They are parallel to each other. So this angle is also I. This is I. And this is I. This is O. If I call this point M and I call this point N, uh, this is O. This is I. I am going to use this diagram to derive the expression for refractive index as indicated. And later, if I take this real depth to be T, I will be able to finalize and get the derivation for part D. Now, considering, if we consider, considering light incident, we are going to consider that the refractive index in here is, is N, and we shall consider an object O below the surface of a medium of refractive index N. The object is here. It is refracted. A light is incident uh, to point N, refracted, extrapolated to give us an image at that point. And uh, we want to derive an expression for, for refractive index. We are aware that uh, if we consider that the refractive index is given by the sine of I over the sine of R, we will need to find the values of I and R. But the assumption we take here for the students following, we assume that N is very close to M. If N is very close to M, uh, it implies that those angles, as I have indicated, are equal. If I call this point T, and uh, I call this point F, then I can say that for N, very close to M, angle angle M O 
n is equal to angle O n if I call this point P which is equal to I and also also angle M I n is equal to angle F n T which is equal to R. This one I already emphasized um, on the diagram and I told you that they are corresponding angles and therefore they are supposed to be equal. Now we shall use these two triangles. We shall use these two triangles using our triangle. The first triangle is I M N using triangle I M N I will get the sine of R. The sine of R will be equal to the opposite which is M N over the hypotenuse which is I N. And I will keep that. Uh, using another triangle that is O M N I will get the sine of I. Sine of I will be MN. This is the triangle I'm talking about. Sine is opposite, which is MN, over hypotenuse, which is ON. I can call this B. But we know that refractive index is the sine of I over the sine of R. So we are going to substitute for sine i and sine r. And when we substitute in here, our i is mn over on. We are dividing, if I use that uh, sign, by mn over in. If we do the mathematics, our refractive index is going to be equal to mn over O N times the reciprocal times the reciprocal which is M N the M N will cancel leaving us with I N over O N so our N is I N over um, now there is there is some reversibility of light to do. There is some reversibility of light to do, uh, which I forgot taking in point. Here, if we consider reversibility of light, we must consider reversibility of light. Considering reversibility. Reversibility of light. We consider light coming back from air to glass. And uh, if light comes back from air to glass, this angle R is considered to be the I. So our N becomes the sine of R over the sine of I. If we consider reversibility of light. Uh, the rest will go on as earlier discussed, but you must understand that. Or we consider um, n sine i is a constant, that we consider that n, the sine of i, is equal to. We either consider reversibility of light, or we consider that n sine i is equal to n air sine r, which would imply um, that if we say n sine i is equal to n air, sign r you confirm that our n will have the sign i down since this is unity so our n becomes our sign of r which is mn over i n divided by mn over o n and this will give us mn over i n times the reciprocal which is o n 
over mn. The mn cancels, leaving us with on over in. So our refractive index is on over in. But remember I said that n is assumed to be close to m. For n close to m, it implies that on, which is this one, is approximately considered to be equal to om, and in is approximately considered to be equal to im. Is approximately considered to be equal to im. And that is if this is very close to m. And therefore, our final expression, which I will bring over here, our final expression for the refractive index expression will now be written as uh, n, therefore, becomes uh, on is approximating om and in is approximating im. Now, if we look at this diagram, om is the real depth and im is the apparent depth. Therefore, the refractive index definition that we shared at the start becomes the ratio of the real depth to the apparent depth for light moving from one medium to another. But since we have these expressions, I want, as I move towards the derivation following next, I want to say that it is important to note that our OM is equal to OI plus IM. That if we are at the object point and want to get to M, OM is equal to OI plus IM. But I want to say that our OM has been given as the real depth as T. Our OM has been given as T. Our refractive index is known. Our apparent depth, which is IM, is the same as OM minus OI. Now, our OI is the distance through which, through which the object has been dispersed. If that distance is called D, as said in the expression, the vertical displacement is D. It implies that we are saying that our OI is D. Uh, using this information, we want to show that our D is having a relationship uh, as indicated there. So from, from the refractive index being equal to real depth, which is T, over the apparent depth, the apparent depth is IM. It implies that IM, if made the subject from here, is T out of N. It implies that IM is T out of N. And uh, if we now come to this expression, we want to find D. Our OM is, if I substitute in the equation that I put in a rectangle, I'll get my OM, which is T, being equal to OI, which is D, plus IM, which is T, over N. If I make D the subject, my D 
will be t minus t over n. And if I factor out the t, I'll get 1 minus 1 over n, implying that the displacement, which is vertical, is 1 minus 1 over n as required. They want us to show that the vertical displacement d is equal to t into 1 minus 1 over n. Uh, this concept is very common and candidates out there, they can ask you to derive to show that an object at the bottom of a glass or a swimming pool is refracted to appear to be at position I as observed directly or at an angle show that the vertical displacement D or any other letter they may choose to use is given by T into 1 minus 1 over N where the different symbols are clearly defined in the question. N is the refractive index of the liquid in the container and uh, T is the real depth or the depth of the liquid. Uh, dear students following, it is as simple as this, but I want to encourage you to always practice. Practice makes perfect, as you may be aware. And, of course, if you always dream when you are sleeping, if you want to keep dreaming, you continue sleeping. If you want to excel, what I mean is that if you want to excel, you are encouraged to continue reading all the time. Because I always remind you that the major function of the brain is to forget. That brings us to our derivation there. And I want to request my producer to give me the next example or the next question. Yes, um, our dear students, the question has been put there for you. We are going to look at this question as an application example. As an application example for the formula we have just derived. And uh, this should take us a while. Before I clear the board, as usual, I expect that if you have not captured this work, I want to encourage you to take a picture. Otherwise, I think the time um, has been well utilized for all students following to capture this. I want us to work through that number and allow me rub off where I started first, probably, for those that may still be capturing that and may not have access to phones or cameras to take a quick picture. We have a question over there, which we should be able to run through um, in time for you to take an exercise of the other questions. A tank contains a slab of glass. Let us assume this is our tank. It contains a slab of glass 8 centimeters thick and of refractive index that. Above this is a depth. So glass is, according to what they are saying, is at the bottom. It is 8 centimeters. That means that the real depth of glass is that. Above this glass, they are telling us the refractive index of glass is also given as 1.6. Above this glass is a depth of liquid, 4.5 meters. This is a liquid of 4.5 meters, uh, centimeters, 4.5 centimeters. You need to pay attention to the units used. And this 
uh, liquid has a refractive index of 5, 1.5. Uh, and upon this floats six centimeters of water. There is water over here. And the refractive index is also given as four out of three. And they have said the depth is six centimeters. Uh, what are they asking? They are telling us that what is the apparent position of a mark on the bottom of the tank? when observed directly above. If we have a mark here, which we are going to take as the object, they want us to find where will it be. The apparent position is uh, the displacement. The apparent position is the displacement of this object. So we shall uh, use this very expression we have got, that the displacement is equal to T, into 1 minus 1 out of n. Displacement is equal to t into 1 minus 1 out of n. And that means that if I call this displacement here 1, 2, 3, I can start by getting d1 as the thickness in glass into 1 minus the refractive index. The refractive index in glass we say is 1 out of 1.6. The displacement in the second liquid will be 4.5, which is the T into 1 minus 1 out of 1.5. And the displacement in water is 6 into 1 minus 4 out of 3. When we compute these values, uh, we shall get this giving us 3 centimeters. Uh, this will give us 1.5 centimeters. And finally, even this will give us 1.5 centimeters. So uh, the total displacement D, which is D1 plus D2 plus D3, will give us 3 plus 1.5 plus 1.5. And this will give us 6 centimeters. But the question is saying, what is the apparent position of the mark? Uh, I recall here again, uh, as we quickly wind up this expression, that we said that this is the real depth. I am reminding you about this. And if an object is here and the image is there, this is the apparent So it implies that our apparent depth is going to be calculated by getting this value from the top. And here when we add, we have 14, we have 18.5. So it means that our real depth is actually 18.5. And that means we have got our displacement here 6 centimeters. So the apparent depth, which they want, will be equal to the real depth minus the displacement, which would be 18.5 minus 6, and this would be 12.5 centimeters. So the object will appear to be at 12.5 centimeters. The apparent mark will appear to be at 12.5 centimeters. Uh, you can see how simple it is. And I want to emphasize that when you are doing this number, it is advisable to break it down if you are not sure that when you do it at a go, you will compute all of them correctly. Should you compute and one of these is wrong, you will score for the ones that are correct and you will only lose on the total effective mark because one of the values here is wrong. But if you have added it right away, the one plus this, and you are substituting in, if one of them is wrong, you don't earn even a quarter mark. I will request my producer to 
go to the next page and my dear students uh, the numbers that are coming through are now exercise questions for you if you can find a way of squeezing that number so that they can capture it at a go that number one and you keep it there for a while a minute or two so that they take a picture I want them to capture all the numbers. You take a picture, my dear students out there, for that number one. The questions are all directed to the discussions we have had over time, including today's lesson. And it is important that you try them out. Uh, when time allows, I will give a highlight on what we mean by lateral displacement in another lesson, of, of course not today. Today's lesson is uh, winding down. Uh, I expect that you have captured number one. You can proceed to number two, give them the second number. My producer, you can give them the second number. The second number is right over there. And uh, it is similar or related to the number that I have just finished, if you can take note. Here they want you to calculate the displacement and the apparent depth of an object. And they have given you the details summarized in a diagram. In this case, the observer is always directly above. There are two positions, but the observer is directly above here for for you to be able to get that apparent position. Um, if you have finished taking number two, uh, we can proceed and go to number three. Our producer can show you number three. Number three. Yes, number three is right over there. We have three different media, actually there are four. And those angles are exactly where they are. 38.2 uh, is an angle of refraction in medium one. 27 degrees is an angle of incidence in medium two. And 22 degrees is an angle of incidence in medium three. And uh, since uh, the question is long, um, you are taking a picture. I hope you took the picture of the diagram and now you have captured the work questions. Uh, for further reading, uh, there is number four and onwards. I've already shared this, but I felt this is, since I always tell you the major function of the brain is to forget, I felt I should remind you that uh, the main books you need to refer to are Nelkon and Parker. And for this particular concept, you can get more number on that page. But I caution you, or I put a disclaimer, that the page may change depending on the edition you are using. But of course, you'll definitely be able to identify the work. And I always tell uh, my students that for every topic you do, if your teacher is using a particular textbook, you know that in these other textbooks, there will always be an additional example you can add in your notes. And of course, do not forget to use the question bank. Do not forget to use the question bank. Um, I will request the producer to run to, to question one. Run back to question one and we wind up our lesson. I am not going to do much. But I said I wanted to illustrate question one. Uh, question one in the exercise. I simply wanted to illustrate quickly what I mean by lateral displacement. If this angle is given, I am not going to do much. I am going to use one minute. We have refractive index. Uh, if this light was to pass through without deviation, without being refracted here, the whole of this angle 
would be I. And therefore, this angle here would be I, if I call it theta. Theta would be I minus R. Now, the lateral displacement is this distance here for the candidates who are watching. The lateral displacement is this. And notice you have been given this distance. So another question can be actually set and you are asked to derive an expression for distance if I call this B, distance AB. What is AB equal to? Uh, once you know this angle, you can get AB using trigonometry and you can consequently be able to get X since you know theta. Since you know theta. So you can build on that. Uh, this is what we shall call the lateral displacement. I want to thank you so much for always attending these lessons and wish you a nice weekend. I remind you not to forget to always visit the YouTube channel, Teacher Kakuru. Also, do not forget the Facebook account, Let's Learn From Home. I want to thank those that have used these two different resources and urge you to encourage and recommend it to the rest. Let them subscribe, share, and utilize the material. I wish you the best, and I send greetings to everyone. Have a nice weekend. God bless you. Somera mudiro lyo nge wagidua Maryland High School eri sangiwe ntebe somero lya bawala na balenzi dusomesa arts and sciences okubire dela kusini esoka okutukira dela kusini yomukaga ngali sangiwa mu kifechi wewe po Burundi tuline bisule byomulembe science laboratory sakone computer lab Wamune Kombo University, a private chartered university that offers world class education at all levels, including certificates, diplomas, bachelor's, and master's degrees. Our courses include computing and IT, law, journalism, nursing, business administration, education, fashion and design, and many more. Admissions for the August 2020 intake are still open. Will you join us?